Let's go, let's go, let's go, everybody. Yeah. My name is Jeremiah, it's J Man, Mineral J Man Speaks, and I'm here with A Team Fridays. That's Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Fridays, coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in The Rock. That's the ROC, and we don't stop. Rochester, New York. We have with us a special guest who needs an introduction. <laughs> My man, Burton Kelso. Here we go. Boop, doop, boop, boop. There we go. There we go. Let's go. What's up, my man? Happy Friday. I need an inter- I need an introduction, huh? You're you're national. I'm international. Uh, I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock the microphone because I get stupid. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good I mean, one. I'll give you that one for me. Uh, but listen, Burton Kelso, the tech expert, he's read all the manuals, and he's here to tell you that he doesn't remember a thing, but he will. Oh. <laughs> he, today we're gonna be talking about when I went to him. And I said, hey, man, what do you want to talk about? He's like, hey, about social media hacking. And sure enough, like the next day, I thought somehow he got his geeks to hack my account <laughs> to prove a point because <laughs> my account got locked up for a second. I know because you, you were at me like, man, that topic's lame. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't uh, you say know, it. But he was you're, like, you're right. you were thinking it. I could see it in your eyes. Uh, I was like, Yeah, you know why? Up. Because I, I don't, anything would like, all the things that you love to talk about, for me, I'm like, ah, oh. but they're so important. They're so important. Data security, hacking, anybody who's ever had uh, a message from Facebook that you can't change, there's no there's no appeal. The appeal process is next to impossible when it comes to certain things. But why don't you introduce yourself, tell, tell the folks a little bit about who you are, where you're from, you know, what set you're claiming. What set I'm claiming? I'm claiming integral, gee. <laughs> But no, I'm Burton Kelso, the tech expert. So I own a tech support company based out of the greater Kansas City area, but I'm also a national, international uh, TV tech expert and a national speaker like my boy, J-Man. But um, funny story, Jay, you What's were that? talking about your Instagram account you yeah. thought had been hacked. Yeah. I got banned on Facebook three days last week, just on some, one of them was a comment that I made towards you jokingly in the RIA group, it was the comment about me uh, beating you down like um, Lionel would Mumra. That comment (laughs) got me banned on Facebook, and it's your fault, man. (laughs) Well, you see, what I did is I called my boy Mark. I was like, Mark, listen, um, Burton was kind of bullying me. He's cyberbullying me, and they were like, okay, we'll we'll go ban him for a little bit. He said, shut this fool down. (laughs) <laughs> Make him look like a clown. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. the only one that's around, right? <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> so we talked about, we're going to talk today about social media uh, accounts getting hacked. Maybe we should also talk about getting banned and what you can do about it. But then also your websites, uh, because that I think that was the other part that you said was really important. Because as agents, sometimes we don't always manage our sites. And then sometimes... There's agents that do that shouldn't be doing right. <laughs> I like that. You know, that so shouldn't be. Where do you want to start? You want to start with social? Let's start with social, man, because the big thing now, and everyone's seen it. You've seen someone write on their wall saying, "Hey, my account's been hacked," or you notice you can't get into your social media account at all because right. it has been hacked. So the first side of that is that cyber criminals are going on Instagram and they're starting to make duplicate accounts. So someone like yourself, Jay, would be a prime target because of the number of followers that you have all all over your social media platforms. And we can't just talk about Instagram and Facebook. LinkedIn is starting to have this issue, too, where criminals will create a fake account, grab some posts that you've made, grab your profile picture, Add your, add your description on this fake profile, and then they'll start sending messages to your friends. Like, you get a message yeah. from Jay. Let's go. Let's go. Sorry. Oh, got another real estate. That's all right. My, my bad. <laughs> I had a hot button on the keyboard for that. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. That That's was a good slump breaker. Bite. That was slump that breaker. Was a, that, yeah, rub shaker. You know, account breaker. Um, but they'll send out friend requests to your friends and you're if they get a link from you jay they're thinking oh man 
I'm about to get some important nuggets. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Sorry. And people fall prey to it. And so I don't know if you knew this or not, but if you're going to get hacked, it's going to be you clicking on something. I mean, it's not like people are going to be able to log into your devices. So it, it, it let's computer. let's explain that. Well, let's start with the with the cloned accounts because I feel like that is so common on a daily basis. I'm like, shoot, I, I I feel like I'm already connected with this person, and then I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, brand new Facebook user or brand new Instagram user. Then I look up the person's name, and it might be. Burton Kelso one is your, is your username rather than Burton Kelso. But just like you said, they steal your photos and, and enough to make it look legit. Not just one, right? The old school ones, they would steal one photo, but now they go, you got 935 posts. <laughs> you can, look, I got a lot of content to choose from here. So if, right. they, if somebody contacts me and says, Jay, somebody hacked your account or cloned your account. Step one, what, what do we do there? Well, the only thing that you can do with a cloned account is to report it. Report so it's it good. And have your friends. Yeah, and we all got to work. We all got to work for each other. So if you see it, then report it and then let your, your buddy know that their account has been cloned. Don't ever use the word hacked in this instance because your account has not, in fact, been hacked. It's just been duplicated. And the whole idea is to get your friends to fall for whatever spam is going to show up like in Instagram, in the DMs or in Facebook Messenger. So, I mean, that's the whole key with the whole cloned account. And it's not a big deal. And you know, is it, it is happen. it better for you to say, like, put a, add to your story, like, hey, everybody, I had a cloned account. If you see it, report it. So, like, the more people that report it, the faster it gets taken down, or just one, one report is good enough? No, it has to be multiple because Facebook itself and Instagram seems like it's run by a bot, bunch of bots. Oh, I mean, no it's doubt. not like you've got live customer service that you can call up and say, hey, homie, somebody stole my account. It doesn't work that way. So the more people that report, the better off you're going to be as far as getting that account taken care of. One other thing you want to do, too, is to make sure that you change your, your social media profile picture. You know, if you're a real estate professional, you got plenty of headshots, right? <laughs> <laughs> We did it at the same time. I know, that right? Was that was was coming. <laughs> but yeah, you got plenty of photos. So change it. I mean, and you should be changing them on a regular basis anyway. But if you've got a cloned account, change it immediately because you never know how long that account's going to be floating around on the on the interwebs, as they call it. So change your photo, change your uh, password probably as well immediately, or that doesn't matter? It doesn't matter if the account's cloned because they don't okay. have access to your account. Okay, right. So they didn't actually duplicated. get access. They just copied, ripped right. off and duplicated your stuff. All right. right. So cl so cloned account. And, and do you think, I think that happens more often on Instagram, but I'm seeing it more on Facebook as well. Right? Well, the way it works is because Meta both owns Instagram and Facebook. So yeah. criminals are smart enough to say, well, let me create it on Insta and then we'll message it through Facebook to get to the followers. So, I mean, that's... You know, right now the trend is Insta, but I mean, it could go back to Facebook. Because should should I not engage with the cloned account? Because sometimes I I like to just have fun with them. And be like, oh, how many gift cards do you want me to send? Oh, 10? Perfect. I'm headed to Walmart right now. How about 20? And like just oh, to see how far right. I can see it. And then I'll be like, should I send it to the cyber uh, cafe that you're in in Nigeria? Or where should where do you want me to to do this? And Man, you uh, just ask it for trouble. You just, you just I, want. I, I guess I, I guess I, I just like to see if I can get to get them to come out of character and be like, man, you're funny, bro. Or something. Just, you know, they like, may you know. come out of character and take your account. You yeah. Know, you don't okay. want that. You just All right. So you're right. I shouldn't engage. Don't make don't the, don't make the, the people that are better at the internet than me angry. Right. Okay. So with, when you say you had mentioned before, I, I wanted to go back to the cloning, uh, somebody hacks your account it's when you click on something right so what do you mean by no. that clicking what happens with a hacked account is that let's say if you're an agent and you haven't changed your password in like a million years it's yeah. probably sitting on the dark web and so criminals are always buying that information and they're constantly logging into our online accounts to see where they can get and one of the first places they go is social media so if someone hacks your account 
that means they take it over completely. That means you can't log into Insta, Facebook, or LinkedIn to make any changes to your account at all. That means if you go to log in and it's kind of like almost the scenario you ran into yesterday where it's like, well, we need some verification or is this your password? Then that means your account has actually been hacked. Yeah. Uh, and just got to give everybody a little bit of background. Yesterday when I logged in, it, it, it was like your account. Mm -hmm. It didn't say it was, it said your account is locked due to suspicious activity. I'm like, what's They're like, you're, you're entering from a, a, an unknown browser. I'm like, I'm at my computer that I'm always at with the same browser. And then I'm like, okay, whatever. So I did the, the two-step verification, you know, whether they, they want to send me a text or an email. Uh, and, and so then would you recommend, I guess let's talk about passwords just for a second. Um, like a password for every social like don't keep your password the same for all of your social media because then if they get one they get it all right that's right but on top of that instead of using passwords people need to start using past phrases because they're a little okay. bit more secure they're yeah. easy for you to remember and um a good example of a passphrase would be like uh purple turkey 2029 exclamation point or silver squirrel you know 2015 things that are just basically two unrelated words put together to form a secure password or is, password. is silver squirrel like was that one of your online uh, personas that you use no i got it because <laughs> my wife is from marysville kansas and uh, it's home of the black squirrel oh so you can't okay. use black squirrel i've seen i've seen some black squirrels in uh in the city in manhattan oh, have you? <laughs> or in queens too were they, were they strapped? <laughs> were they? <laughs> like, Yo, were they man, packed? what's up? No, uh, that's 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 funny. So using passphrases because that's that's big in the crypto world too. Like if you, yeah. right with it with your uh, your your wallets, right? They, it's always a phrase. You know, it might be a no, sixteen word phrase. And it's like, shoot, I gotta write that down. Don't write it down on a piece of paper that, on a post it next to your computer either. Let me throw out this nugget real quick, Jay. So there's a website called uh, useapassphrase.com that okay. will auto-generate passwords for you or passphrases for you. And you usually the website will generate four unrelated words, but you could actually go to the site and just two, choose two of them, and then you're going to have a secure enough passphrase. And, and the website will actually show you how many years it would take a criminal to figure out what that passphrase would be. And you're talking thousands of years. So, I mean, that's a good or, website. To check or out. millions. Hold on. Um, Are you at the site? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it up here in a second. I just right. was distracted. Somebody was giving us a lot of hearts. So I was like, oh, thank you in my head. Thank you, Burton. So <laughs> you really rang a bell with somebody when you start talking about passphrases. They were like, oh, that's my jam. And uh, <laughs> unless it's you on online. Give no, that wouldn't be me. Oh, there we heart. go. There we go, folks. Yes. Give us some of those. We call them fireworks. But I just got to go over here because I had the Chrome. A Chrome browser was on a different screen. So with past phrases, then do you recommend the good old, oh, Google will remember my password for me or uh, the Apple chain? Like I got a Mac Apple. and it says keep it to the chain or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know there are some cyber guys out there that are like, well, you want to use a password manager like LastPass. And I mean, all of them can be compromised if your master password is weak. But what people need to remember is that you need some method to store all those passwords so that you don't have to remember them in your browser, whether it's Safari or Chrome, Edge or whatever. What's the site again? No. Passphrase? Yeah, pass. use a passphrase. Okay, use it. I'm like, remember my passphrase. <laughs> oh my gosh. Use a uh, passphrase. Got you. Dot com, just in case. Thanks. It should just be a plain old website. Yep, I got it. Good. I was starting to get concerned there. You're really good at these tutorial stuff. You should do this for a living. Oh, yeah. I thought about that. <laughs> Uh, here we go. So Jamie, I'm putting it up right now. It's, it's, I put it in the comments, but Jamie, Jamie, good speed. What a great last name that is, right? I think she's from Ithaca, New York. We got Amanda Ardu, Duini, 
from Elmira, New York. What's up? Um, use passphrase.com. Right. Stitch, no, you subfloor balsamic. That's a good Wait one. a minute. Did you put the what, right website? I thought it was use a passphrase. That's exactly yeah, it's use a passphrase.com. Yeah, yeah. That's what's there, right? I guess. I'm not looking at it. I'm going on you. Yeah, and it says like here. Let me just share the screen with you, sir. I thought you were gonna do that. I thought you were gonna do that. Oh, there I there am. You go. Let's see. Yeah, that's can... it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Use a password. That's phrase. it. Yeah. Okay. See now, leave that up real quick for a hot second. So All see right. how it's got the four. You. you can just use two of those words, like you can use stitch elevator or subfloor uh, stitch or or any combination of those two words. In normal circumstances. Two words is enough. You don't have to use all four unless you're just that person. Oh, underpay Google. Mary Bagel Vindicate. Look at that. Yeah. Raffle Showbiz Derby Track. So <laughs> do they, they're kind of looking at us as approximate crack time. Not crack like, like Whitney Houston, but. Right. Crack, crack the password. Four, four million. 444,665 centuries, dude. Centuries. Right. Okay. That's impressive. So no one's getting in. That's impressive. All right. Let's go back up to the two up. Boop, boop. That was that was a good field trip. I like that. And I like to see how I set you up and we're in opposite corners. That was that was nice. Yeah. So let's let's so the other thing about hacked accounts too on social media is what another way as far as saving your passwords and using past phrases is something you mentioned earlier, which is the two-step or two-factor authentication. So that way, if a criminal figures out your password, at least they're going to need that second form of authentication to get into your account. And so in your instance with your browser, I think yeah. your browser updated. And so it confused Instagram to saying, oh, this looks different. And so that's why you got the alert yesterday. Okay. All right. So... If something does happen, and after we talk about hacked accounts, I want to talk about unpublished, because that's something that happened to me one time too, um, or face Facebook jail that happened to you the other day. All right, so with with the hack, because I think these are all so relevant to, it, it, like you don't worry about it until it happens, just like a lot of the stuff. And when my my late. when my page got unpublished, it was because so many people went to my Facebook page because it was at like a big conference. It thought it, that like the bots were attacking it, so they unpublished my page, and I was like, <gasps> "I'm at the airport, hyperventilating." This lady's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "I'm on my Facebook page. It's not there." <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. So the what, I know what you're going. I know where you're going, but here's the bad news about it: if something happens to your social media account, there's no customer service. You're sunk. So if you're a realtor. I mean, you're out of business, especially and, and the bad thing about it. Not only is your personal account done, any business accounts that are associated with your personal account, they're done too. You know, now the only saving grace <clears throat> would be like Instagram. Instagram treats your personal account and your business account as two separate accounts. But all of the other social media platforms, I think Twitter is the only uh, uh, other exception. All those accounts are locked up. It's not like Facebook's going to be like, well, you made an error or your personal account got hacked, but we'll still let you have access to your business. It's done. And forget about calling support. There is none. It doesn't exist. So that's why yeah. it's very imperative that you take care of your social media accounts because they're, they're I mean, you're done. You're starting over from scratch. So that's especially, why you're So like, especially for those of us that have like, you know, years, I mean, decade now over a decade's worth of content that's on there and i know i was looking at my page the other day there are ways to back up what you have there right is that a good yeah, recommendation i mean yeah, yeah but i mean but still what are you going to do if you create a new account are you going to post 10 years worth of stuff again yeah just just and then massive <laughs> content <laughs> dump <laughs> here's 10 years in one day folks and think about the connections that you have associated with your social media accounts. Because I know we get lazy with our contacts and keep them on social media. But the one thing oh, that true. people should know about social media is that you don't own it. 
and you really need to be redirecting people back to your website or you need to be getting those contacts so that you can that they're your contacts not leaving them on social media so yeah it's great but you definitely need to take ownership of those contacts at some point yeah and let me just kind of re repeat that again because we talk about that in the epro certification uh, about digital marketing, spokes and hub, right? Your your spokes are all the marketing that you do. The hub is where you drive them back to. Uh, that should be your website. It can be your social media if you're if you're going to go there and have a page and have them come back or something like that. But it, you don't own that stuff at any point in time. At any point in time, Facebook would just go. You know what? I don't <laughs> like you anymore. Done. Instagram, same thing, same company, and any of the others. So it's like. Uh, Oh boy. Oh boy. So prevention is the key. If something does happen, just make sure you have good passwords. If something does happen, you know, you're kiss your ass goodbye. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> if and the other thing, if you call let me throw this thing it. out too. So Jay, we both know that there are people that boost their post on social media. So obviously there's financial information stored in your account. Now we had a customer call about a month ago. Uh, hackers got her for about six grand um, because she had her credit card on file and they just they just used it. And right. locked like, her out you know what? Account. I'm gonna run an ad to something else and <laughs> right. you know, have a daily limit of 10 G's <laughs> until this bad right. boy stops getting charged. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I don't think agents think about that. Just the, the financial implications, especially if you're boosting and what can happen if your account is actually hacked. So. Well, here's another question for you then. What about the spammers that write recommendations on your page? And they're like, oh, it was great. I went on Forex Trader and now I make millions and I recommend you call Burton Mary, because he is the best. And here's the WhatsApp number. I, all I go yeah. on is I reported as spam and then I block and, you know, block the person from the page. But is that that about it? That's all you can do. Same thing with those reviews. It's almost like Google. Someone leaves a bad review. You can report it. But I mean, there's really not much that they can do. So with social media, it's one of those things that you're always having to be proactive as far as your accounts are concerned, making sure that you're checking your reviews and making sure that you're checking your comments uh, to make sure that you're not getting those spammy posts and that you're taking care of them ASAP. Well, and I guess the, the lesson too would be make sure your settings are turned on for that, that you can filter any kind of uh, offensive remarks or comments, but also that you can approve posts on your page so that you, you'll get it at least when they post it. If it's a good one, you can reply to it. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, Burn, it was so nice working with you. This is a different Burn, <laughs> obviously. Uh, but, <laughs> <Good one. laughs> but you know, you can reply to that because that's that's good service, right? Somebody gives you a good review, you reply to it. Somebody says, you know, a bad review, you you, you reply to that as well, uh, immediately, right. or block them and, and block them from the page before any any further damage is caused. Jeffrey Scott Stanton says, Look "What's up, Jeffrey?" Jeffrey. What's up, Dr. Jeffrey? Dr. Jeffrey Scott Stanton. Here, he loves this. Oh, wait, I got to turn my effects back on. Here we go, right here. This is his favorite sound. <laughs> That's for you. That's for you. All right. Uh, all right, so we talked about the social media, but what about the website then? Because I can't even oh get into God. my own, own hey, website. That, that's a whole new arena. So websites are being created by realtors using site builder tools like Wix, Wix. GoDaddy, yeah. Squarespace, um, not necessarily Shopify, but these sites are online. Yeah. And if criminals get your credentials off of the dark web, then they can easily commandeer your website and put up offensive stuff. Um, if you've got credit cards associated with that website, they can steal those. Your client's and information, right? You're exactly, because I know with Wix and with um, GoDaddy and with Squarespace, you can store your customer information within the site builder tool. And it's, you know, it, you definitely need to take steps to make sure that those accounts are secured because there's no backup. Because under normal circumstances, let's say if you're doing a WordPress website, 
you can back that WordPress website. So if it were commandeered, hopefully you can upload the information back up and you're in business. But with Wix or some of the other web-based tools, you don't necessarily, or you want, aren't necessarily able to get that site back up. You would have to rely on the provider to get your site back up. That's if they even have a backup. So it's not to say you can't use site building tools. It's you have to make sure that you're keeping those online accounts safe, so it's just like you do your social media. And so what if uh, similarly, I hire a great guy to do my site and then like, maybe we're not getting along anymore. How can I get it to my own site that I don't even know the password or anything to? Oh my gosh, this could be a whole different topic. It's because the challenge is hire the right person in the beginning. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's what it boils down to. And you've got to have enough knowledge to vet them to make sure what tool they're using to build your website. Because I know a lot of web designers that will just go use Wix to put together a site or Squarespace. And you're thinking you're getting this professional website and you've got this cookie cutter website. You don't know anything about it. They go away and then all your stuff is gone. I mean, I can't tell you how many times that's happened with us trying to get people's website and email back up because their web guy just kind of went to outer space, just, went, just warped away. So let's, I like this conversation here because it's, this is something, not that I may have experience, but I've heard other people, um, you know, where, where to begin. Number one is probably like, look at a website that you like and want to maybe model your site after not copy guys, but like a theme or something that you really like so that you can kind of communicate the deliverable to the person doing the site. But then also like, what are the questions to ask? Like you said, asking the right questions, what are the right questions? Well, the first thing, as far as research is concerned, you've got to uh, reach out and see what type of websites that they've built. And after that, you need to reach out to the people, the websites were created for to find out what the experience is with that web designer. Also, oh, tenure like is that. important. You need to find out how long the web designer has been in business and then just straight up ask, are they designing the website in HTML or are they using a site builder tool? Because, I mean, the hustle's on with a lot of these tech businesses and people don't know. So it's easy to get scammed from tech people because you just don't understand the terminology and what should happen. And then the final, I mean, there's more, but the most yeah. important tip that you should know is that you need to own your domain name and your email. And of course, you know, your website as well, because if problems occur, you need to be able to call whoever Re the parent company is redirect it. to regain it. Yeah. I, uh, I always tell that story that I didn't own Jeremiah's <laughs> I went, I left, I left one brokerage and went to another. They were nice enough to register that register my name on my behalf. Cause they did everything for me. Cause they were so wonderful. And then when I went to leave, they were like, no, we own your name, boy. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> and, and that's where like J man came from J man. You know, I had to come up with a different name. J man, J Monero, J man sells.com was my website. And I was like, Keep the name. It's hard to spell anyways until the <laughs> <laughs> until like my three year my my it was the it came up for renewal and then I was able to to get it back. But let me throw this out to you. So for is this is my thought as far as agents are concerned. That yeah. every real estate agent should have their first name, last name dot com domain or realtor dot com. Yeah. You agree realtor. with that? Yeah. Yeah, because I mean there are a lot of real estate brokerages where you could set up your website but it's not necessarily your website because anything could happen with that. So rather than direct, and if you may change real estate companies, you know, so well, you should have. Yeah. I, I think you should be able to, uh, even if you have like the brokerage does it for you, there's still an, uh, an agent templated side to that. And I think if you ask more times than not, they'll give you the ability to edit it because if I'm, a, I'm one of a hundred agents, I still want to set myself apart and build build a brand within the company guidelines. And, and I think nowadays, I'm going to start with New York, but the rest of the country will follow. There's so many things that have to be on websites in order to be compliant with all of the 
NAR uh, code of ethics and the disclosures that we have, and then ADA compliance is coming down the line as far as like closed captioning and stuff. That's it's crazy. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> that was an opening for you Woo! to continue talking. Uh, but well, let's say this because like our most of my audience here is is in real estate that'll be watching this or that's watching it now, and so I, I think. Another example why, like, you go to a for sale by owner and say, hey, you should hire a professional because they can do it better. And they will. And then you go and try to do your own damn website. Right? Like, you don't, you if you could do websites for a living, you'd be doing websites for a living. So pay a professional to do it. Uh, but, but do you think it's somebody that has to be, like, specialized in the real estate space? Is that better? Or just like you said, ask all those right questions? I think it's somebody that has to have some knowledge of how to, you know, build a real estate website. You can't just go to, and and the problem is with technology, Jay, is that the fact that most people assume that they're supposed to know all this stuff. And right. it's crazy because it's not like you get into real estate knowing all the ins and outs. You've got to, you got to get you to know school, nothing. you've got to get your license. <laughs> Same thing with technology. And I think the industry puts it out there that people should know this. Like you're a dummy. You don't know how to send email. You don't know how to go to a website. So people get a little self-conscious and like, well, golly, I should know this. So then they try, attempt to do it themselves because- Did you say golly? I did say golly. <laughs> <laughs> that was my substitute for what I really wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golly, <laughs> golly, 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 gee. I, I should know be Walkers. knowing this stuff. Well, that, gee, that's... Walkers, I should really know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, me and the beaver are going to go play now, Mrs. Cleaver. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that is that is funny. Yeah, I, and I I think yeah, you when you start, you don't know anything, and I think you could speak to this, but same for me. When it comes to technology, we're constantly learning. It's changing right. so rapidly. We do nothing but learn in order to teach it to other people. It's it's you have to. You're not going to go. Well, you know, last year. When I was when I learned about internet security, they're gonna go. I'm sorry, Mr. Dinosaur. Um, the tar pits over here. Just walk right into that. We'll find your fossils. You know, right. 100 million years from now. Yeah, I mean, and so that's and I think that's something agents need to understand is as tech people, we're always learning. There's always some new piece of technology that that's coming out, and so you shouldn't feel bad because you don't know whatever. Let's say you don't know how to set up a smart home. You get a Ring device. You can't hook it up. Don't feel bad. You know, you're using Outlook. You have a problem with it. Don't feel bad. Just ask for help. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Either ask an expert or ask YouTube University. Oh, YouTube University isn't always good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great. I mean, look, it, I, I was setting up a new surround sound with a sound bar from my man cave last night. And I, I was, was like, where should I place my speakers? Uh, you know, cause it's different with a sound bar than it is with like a typical. And, and I'm like, let me ask the YouTube. And I watched four or five different videos to get a cross section of opinions. And then I made my own decision. Oh uh, my gosh. That's too funny. But we do have a couple questions here. When you say you have to keep them safe, how do you do that by a strong password? Is that, let me just add it to the broadcast here. Uh, yeah, the um, yeah, the when you OK, so when you keep your website safe, it's the same thing with the site builder tool. You just create a strong password and make sure that you're changing that password or passphrase on a regular basis, because, you know, the, the thing that affects not regular people and real estate agents is that data breaches are occurring all the time. So you never know when your password is going to be or passphrase is going to be leaked onto the dark web. So, you know, you just have to stay at top of, uh, ahead of the curve and just make sure you're constantly changing your passwords or passphrases so that you're keeping your online account safe. And again, with websites, you do have to turn on the two factor authentication to make sure that if your password is figured out, then you'll get a notification if some criminal is trying to log into your account. And but, so, but let me finish. If someone else is managing your website, you should be the recipient of that two-factor authentication. You can't treat your website well. I'm going to let J-Man design my website and anything that happens with that website, he's going to deal with. Because J-Man may drop off the face of the earth one day and 
you know, what happens to your website then? So you've got to be in control of, of every aspect of it. Yeah. So it's almost like have your web designer give you admin access and then you give them creative access. So it's like that, you have the master admin and then they have the, uh, the lower level. Facebook has the same thing. Like if you're going to have content creators for your site, mm -hmm. you, you have all the access. And it, this is a fun fact for everybody. When you go to the new pages experience, let me just say this. While I do like the new pages experience, what will happen is you're going to get removed as an admin on your own page. Okay, where you can only use it as the page, which caused me a problem for three weeks to stream to my page because it said I wasn't authorized. I'm like, it's my page. What are you talking about? And it wouldn't allow me to stream. I had to ask, add somebody else as an admin, full admin. So somebody I trusted, then they added me back as an admin. Then I removed them. I was like something to that effect. I was going to add is be careful who you add as an admin or has rights to your page, because what if their account gets commandeered? Because remember, if they, True if that. their account gets hacked, then who's to stop a, a criminal from getting access to your page? So I'm, I mean, I understand the purpose of admin access to like a Facebook page, like let's just say your real estate company has different people that are maintaining the company page. Yeah, but or running ads sure. and stuff like that, right? Right, yeah. But you've got to be careful who you're relying into the main page because what happens if their account is commandeered? Then you're screwed. By golly. Golly G. Willikers, <laughs> Mr. Kelso. Golly. <laughs> I I bet you were that Eddie Haskell kid. You were the kid that was super polite and friendly, and then you as soon as the door closed, you were like, Yo, homies, let's go. We're gonna cause some trouble. Like that, that was me, man. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> You said was. You said was. <laughs> yesterday. Yesterday. Today yesterday. you're a changed man. Today you're a changed no, man. No, I'm uh, always, no, I, I understand. I'm always Eddie Haskell. <laughs> hey, and if anybody's watching from, watching from Rochester, uh, Mr. Kelso will be part of our tech con this year on November 3rd. I believe it is 11 3 cause, or 11 2. Maybe it's 11 no, 2. No, it's 11 3. 11 3. Yeah. Okay. It's November 3rd because I know I have an event the day before that I'm flying back for the Rochester event. Oh, we got a question from Billy P. Billy P from B-Town. <laughs> she Was says, that for Jeffrey? <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey probably <laughs> logged off already. Um, he's good at like hopping on, adding a little bit, and then hops off so you'll think that he's on there the whole time. Uh, oh, is, there, okay. is there a way to get alerted if someone does clone an account and is posting your on your friend's pages other than someone letting you know, like a Google alert? Look at you, Billy, with your Google Alert question. reference. That was a good question, Billy. And no, there is no way because my account was cloned probably about a couple of months ago. I got a, the only way I knew about it, my cousin in, oh, where's, uh, he's in Florida, just messaged me and said, I know this isn't you, but, you know, there's another account. So there's, there's nothing that you can do. And that's why criminals do it because there's no alerts for it. It's a separate account. I knew it wasn't you because the person had a way better sense of humor. And I think that's what, that was it. I was and like, they, I was like, wait, using, this, this person is witty and quite funny. This cannot yeah, be were, Burton Kelso. They were using foul language and you know, me with my gollies and the G Willikers and, uh, shucks. We forgot shucks. <laughs> shucks. <laughs> Billy says, dang. Okay. Thanks. But a Google <laughs> alert is, is a good, you know, I would have it for your name, for your brokerage, for every listing that you take. Uh, it, it does help. It's it's alerted me when somebody has like added uh, video promos and stuff for events that we do, and they they don't always let us know. And like we can share in the marketing. I'm like, oh, this is a good video. I didn't know when you were going to post it or where. And then I take it and I reshare it. So yeah. how are you going to share that Google Alerts tech nugget? Because there's a lot of people out there watching that probably don't know how to set up Google Alerts. Oh, we just go to Google, folks, and say, "How do I here set up go. a Google here Alert?" Here you go. Just, here you go. Like, yeah, just go to Google Alerts, man. You know, well, nobody out here's, there that here's okay. Well, it's, I don't want to get. I'm not a guy that gets too technical. That's the difference between between the two of us. I go, "How's it work? It works great." Set up the Google Alert. It'll tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. But, but but for real, if you go there and you said like, I have it set up for my brokerage name for my name and any misspellings of my name because they'll, they could quite possibly mis, misspell it. Uh, and, and then also any listing that I take, if I take a listing on Seneca Parkway, 
then I, I would have the exact address, you know, one, two, three, uh, Seneca, but then I would also have the street name. And then I would also have any kind of neighborhood that, that, that house is in, you know, like if it's in the Maplewood historic district where I live, I want to hear all the other stories or, or, you know, as part of us providing reasonable care to our clients is knowing what's going on in the neighborhood. If you didn't know that somebody got shot the next street over, you can't go, well, I didn't read that in the paper. No, that's part of your job as being a real estate expert and somebody who specializes in the area. So once you create those alerts, you'll get a daily digest, which is one email with all of the uh, alerts in one. Yeah. So to shorten what J-Man said, just go to googlealerts.com forward slash alerts, and then it'll take you right to the Oh, site. I thought you wanted greater detail. My bad. That, well, you explain Ima how it works. Imagine me doing life. exactly what you asked for. Oh my God, you got to get to the website. Dang it. You were providing the source. I see what you're saying. Oh, Beverly, thank you. You know Beverly from Rio. Um, of course, see? I, oh, I, I mean, well, she actually, does she live in Boston and then she teaches? I don't know where room. Beverly lives, man. It's, it's like Rhode Island and then she's like Boston. From Boston. And she got that Boston accent Boston, where she lives she near the harbor and she eats yeah. chowder. But that's she also kind of like a Rhode Island and a New Hampshire. They're very similar through that that part. Maybe, maybe she's right. going to comment now. Okay. Right, yeah, you. You know? What else? Anything else you want to cover here? I feel like there's a lot of great stuff. What will you be speaking about in Rochester? I don't even know. I'm oh, uh, cybersecurity and LinkedIn tips. Ooh, LinkedIn tips and cybersecurity, folks. Um, how many, what are you at, like 30,000 something? On, no, on that's the max. I'm hitting 18,000 on LinkedIn. Oh, pff, we'll step your game up, homie. What's up? I know. I need to. I need to, man. I'm trying to be like you, you know? Well, here's a here's a topic you didn't expect to hear from me today because uh, I didn't right. tell you about it. But I think this is great for because you do a lot of live TV interviews, which live video is different on social media because you're like, hey, maybe 6, 10, 12 people are watching it now, maybe 100, 200 watch it. You're on live TV, possibly in front of millions. Yes. What, how do you prepare for that? Like if, and it, cause I think a lot of agents might get contacted by a news crew and they go, Hey, we're running a story. Here's our deadline. You continue. What, What's that call yeah, look, so, look like coming in first or do so, you outbound call them or, or both? No, no, no. The media contacts you. And so if you have a good strategy on social media, like using appropriate hashtags or giving out valuable information, then the media will contact you to do a story. So let's say that there's a crisis in real estate, agents attacked or just something happens. So you would be considered uh, a resource because when these news crews reach out for a story, they need the actual source of the story to come on air, but then they also need an expert to give tips on how to avoid whatever the scenario is. So I come in as a, I guess, as an expert on various tech items. Like I was yeah. on News Nation Now last night. Um, and the whole process is, they'll give you a time and place and then they'll give you some you know some questions to or talking points that you're going to talk on and then that's pretty much it um most of them are done by zoom so obviously you need to make sure that you've got good internet and don't try to get on tv and sell just give out your facts and roll with it and if you get featured make sure that you get copy of your video so that you can post it on social or you can put the video on your YouTube channels. And if you do it like I do, strategically hide your camera and take screenshots as you're on air. It's impossible, but I mean, I do it all the time. You're like, like the no looker, like. Yeah, that's exactly right. So let's. The first time I was on Newsmax, you can actually see my eyes darting down because I was trying to position my camera. <laughs> They were like, no, great interview. Uh, we're, we're, we won't call you again, though, but great interview. <laughs> no, no, really fantastic. Uh, and, yeah. and so I guess let's give them a, a look because some of our states have spokesperson training for the leadership part of their, their leadership training. Uh, but for those of you who don't, the answer should always be yes. If you get that call, always say yes. Just make sure you're prepared. Make sure you ask them whether it's going to be a live or pre recorded interview, right? Would you say that's important? Right. Because when it's pre-recorded, you could have a great interview, 
all the way up until the last minute, and then you say, well, it's really tough out there for buyers. Er, that's the sound bite that they use. J-Man said, it's tough out there for buyers this year. You shouldn't buy a home. And then I'm like, wait, I said 20 minutes of how great the market was. Right, exactly. That's, I mean, you're exactly right. Um, but yeah, live, you get the whole deal. for Like you said, it's pre-recorded. They'll just take specific sound bites. So my recommendation would be if you're trying to give a positive message, talk in positive so sound bites, and don't ramble. If they ask you a question, just get to the point, answer it, and then allow them to move on. So that way they can edit the video, and it makes their jobs a lot easier. And like you said, when they call, unless you're headed on a continental flight, um yeah definitely say yes because true story i was flying to florida one of the local stations called and said we need you and i'm like i'm at the airport and they're like we'll come to you and i'm like are you serious yeah there's traffic and everything so they will i mean they want you so if you become that source always be available pop that collar um they came to me. They were like, Mr. Kelso, Mr. Kelso, please, we have a quick interview for you. Uh, but, okay, so asking whether it's pre-recorded or live, make sure you're not wearing green. If you're going to be in a studio that might have a green screen, green or blues typically aren't aren't the best. Ha the other thing, too, Jay, I was going to throw out, and you knew this from um, Rhea. Did you know I went uh, live on Great Day San Antonio? Yeah. When we were in San Antonio? Yeah. So if you're traveling – pitch to different stations and that way you can be in that market as well and, and what's that what's that pitch like do you just you basically write your segment so you let's have... say that you have a good real estate story or you're a realtor who is passionate about something like we have a customer in kansas city who is a real estate agent she has her own brokerage but she also likes to cook so she put together a cookbook and I'm like, this would be a great segment for TV. So she wrote a pitch. They had her on. She made some Cincinnati chili. And, you know, the rest is history. Is history. You know the rest of the story. Who's that? Who's that? I don't know. Paul Harvey, man. Shoot. Oh, what? Do I look like I watch Paul Harvey? Not now, if you more, he was some, on the radio. If you would have said Steve Harvey, now, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to come. That, I would have recognized that quote. But okay, so we'll finish off with this TV stuff. Uh, have your talking points prepared. Stick to your talking points. Keep it positive, and uh, always say yes. Always say always yes. say yes. Yes. You, you, and you, wait, save the contact. For the person that you, if you do a good interview, like you said, you create this database of people because they're always under the gun. Like they'll call you and be like, Hey, running a story. Our deadline is this. You know, I got a call one time to, for my opinion on how I thought windmills in the middle of Lake Ontario would affect waterfront values. Cause there was a plan to put windmills like a mile out in, in, the, in Lake Ontario. And I was like, I hopped off the phone like, man, I don't know anything about this topic. But by the time I I was going to be interviewed, I was ready. Oh, good. Where's the clip? I want to see the clip of you being interviewed. We all do. Um, I have some. They're on my they're on my my YouTube channel. They better be on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. But the other one last tip I'd add about as as far as television is concerned. Yeah. There's specific ways that you can brand yourself when you're on TV. Because under normal circumstances, you, they're not going to mention, they'll mention you, that you're a realtor, but they're not going to mention your company name. So like J-Man and I are twinning today wearing our shirts with our logo. This is what I wear whenever I'm on TV. So that way they can say, oh, well, this guy works for an IT company. And believe it or not, I've worn my integral shirts on national TV when I was on TV in London a couple of days ago wore the same thing. And what's surprisingly about the London interview, they always mention the fact that I'm out of Kansas city and they always mention my company name. So brand yourself always whenever you, you can, when you're on TV. Excellent. All right. Good stuff. What, what do you want to go out to? I'm going to give you uh do we want to do today's going to be a good day or, um, I got to see, or Ray de la Selva. This is his like Spanish music or, Spanish music, man. 
You pay want homage it? Okay. to your this is a good one. Yeah, pay pay yeah. homage to your roof, man. Here we go. Get it. Get it, son. Uh, what do you want me to rap with this? Lunes, yo me llamo tu sana la gente me dice como es. El rey de la selva. Tiene perfecto gracioso raíces. Como es. El rey de la selva. Cuando con mi leona cazando los hierbos.